you grow up, femininity is looked at as one way. So when you're not that one way, they find names to call you. You're a tomboy. You're this, you're that. And so you associate things like powers, things like strength, things like, um, you know, dressing different from them as uh, anti-fem. But as you get older, as I got older, I realized that no, this isn't anti-fem. This is just anti your norm and your your useless definition of what that is. And so it's very different. I'm pretty much the same person, but I've embraced this thing as like, no, I'm not a tomboy. I'm exactly what I'm supposed to be, which is a powerful feminine woman. I apologize that you want to be like everybody else, but I'm a leader. So I think that putting it in a box is what we've done for so long. So calling it, you know, what you dress like or whatever the case may be kind of just makes it very small, but I think it's very, very, very large. So I guess I express it by just being unapologetically myself. Like, how do I express my fem? Usually while naked. Oh, I definitely identify as fem. Like, there is something just about like even though I don't have strong attachments to my pronouns right like there is just this like mm, about like owning my femme and to me that means that yeah I'm soft right but I am dynamic I am bold and I can be all those things in my lipstick in my heels like um so yeah Definitely. Like, queer to me is like the fact that I can step in a room and folks be like, hmm, you're a little different, huh? Like, it's just in my presence, it's in my being, it's, you know, in my personality, the way I show up in spaces, it's the way I roll out of bed in the morning and just the way the clothes fall on me. <laughs> um, so queer to me is, is, is deeper. Um, so being like queer femme is something that I think, you know, especially in having conversations, right, and knowing that like femme is a queer term and there's ownership there. I think there's also power and like being able to expand that, um, not allowing ownership of like cis women and cis het women to take that um, from our like queer femme family but if it can be expanded and shared I think there's power in stepping into spaces as femme right not just female not woman right but stepping into spaces as femme and um, that's something that I'm hoping to progress to as a community um, but I don't want to you know uh, I'm not going to be at the front of that fight right like at the end of the day if like my my femmes want to own it and they're like look this is queer this is a queer term like then I back that because I respect ownership in that um, and I don't think that it's cis het women's place to take that I don't think it's cis women's place to take that um, but if it can expand and if it can expand respectably yo like the femme forefront like uh, I just mm. It gives me chills. I can't even put it into words. So. Yeah. For me, like I said, it's uh, like femme is is like the way I move, right? Like so, moving through spaces. Um, you know, I put my clothes on, and there's still just like a little sass to it. There's the fact that I, you know, can be sitting still, and yet somehow my body is swaying. I'm constantly in motion. Um, I can yeah like I will be like getting ready and next thing you know I'm like dancing in the shower and <laughs> uh, you know I'm laying in bed and and I'm you know getting comfortable and getting comfortable is like that little twerk in my booty or like the <laughs> you know the the soft touch against my own skin um so yeah like it's it just radiates like that femininity and that femme is just it's radiating it's in my pores um, so that it comes out <laughs> awesome. my grandmother raised me right and so uh, my grandmother in her mind had it and she still says it to this day that like uh, she's like one of what like seven or nine children like some abundant amount of children and she was always like the girls 
the boys were raised to be boys and the girls were raised to be girls and boys. It was like this sense of like feeling like all the women in our family always had to do it all. Um, and yet, so like there was a little bit of projection in that, right? Like, so when I would, uh, she'd buy me like the, you know, the cutest little dresses and get me all dolled up. And then the first thing I do is like run outside and roll around in the mud and like jump over somebody's fence or, you know, whatever. Um, her still trying to curtail that, right? Of like, oh, you're such a little tomboy. Like, you know, oh, you're just so rough. Like, you're so hard. And it's like, but look at you, right? Like, you know, you, you are a woman, like you are bold, like, and you still like you make messes, like, you know? Um, and so my journey with that, I think started out very frustrated, just like, why do I have to be one or the other? Like, why can't I just be both? You know, why, why, why do I have to always put on these frilly ass little socks? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, somewhere in all of that was just me. Like, and now, right now that I'm this grown ass person, <laughs> um, watching my grandmother and the way she admires me and the way she looks at me and she compliments me, like, it's so ironic because I look at her and I'm like, yeah, I remember when you, you know, you used to scold me over this, like you used to. And like, now she's like, oh, look at, like, you look at your hair, you're so beautiful, like, and I would have not combed my hair in a month, like, and she would flip out if she knew the specifics of that, but, like, just knowing that, like, I can just show up and be naturally me and not have to work so hard at being this idea of, of what it means to be femme or a woman or, you know, these things, um, and, and also not have to fight off the strength that I have. And if it presents itself as masculine, then okay, like, so be it. Like, um, but that's just me. I love challenging the way I was born. I love challenging people's preconceived notions of me. I love the fact that I get lots of compliments and that I can practice my makeup and, uh, that I'm not tied to what's on my birth uh, certificate. Like anybody can be femme, it doesn't matter what's on your birth certificate, how you're born. Um, femme is great. It just, the way it defies toxic masculinity and the way that it embraces so much of uh, the human psyche that's been kind of forgotten or left down upon, um, it really allows me and other femmes to just express ourselves and come together in a bonding community. So I guess my journey with realizing I was a femme started in self-denial when I would dress up in like traditional women's clothing, wear makeup, stuff like that, but I still identified as a cis dude. Um, and over time I stopped being scared and I stopped like doing my makeup in the car and I started doing it at home and I started, um, going out in public more and I, then I identified as like queer for a minute, then I identified it as gender questioning and non-binary and then finally settled on gender identity of a woman or woman. Yeah. And being femme, um, it was always there, like, but due to certain factors like patriarchy, um, cis normativity, stuff like that, you know, they're all tied together. Um, I could never really express it until later in my life. I identify as pansexual, um, and as my girlfriend would say, a hard femme. There's al it's always a double-edged sword with being called femme because you're, if you're femme, you're vulnerable, you're virtuous, you, uh, you have like emotional labor, um, but that that's what makes it amazing, um, being femme and supporting other femme people. Um, 
So that that's the good part of it about it. But <clears throat> I'd say the bad part about being femme is constantly being questioned. Um, you make a decision. Are you sure? Is that really what you want to decide? Did a man tell you to do that? Did a masculine person tell you to, to say that? So there's, there's that. Um, yeah, so double-edged sword. Um, it's like if I put a skirt on, then I have to put my boots on. If I wear really tight pants, then I have to wear like a baggy shirt. Um, it's like sometimes there, it's the sense that like I can't be too femme because if I'm not, if I'm too femme, then I won't be taken seriously. Um, and if I'm not femme enough, then people won't want to won't want to talk to me. It's almost like, yeah, people have a hard time approaching me. For example, um, walking down the street, see a dude and a chick, chick gets pissed, and then I'm like, I'm fucking checking you out. <laughs> I'm not checking him out, like, <laughs> So that constant battle between like trying to pre present yourself as queer, but also feminine and like owning it, struggle. Owning what you know as who you are and being able to have a conversation about it. Um, that's what I've always loved and been intimidated about within the queer community is you're always questioned. Um, and it's not necessarily because they think you're wrong. It's just like, like, why are you doing this? Like, what is this? Um, and I guess the other, the other portion is trying to express to people outside of the community what intersectionality is. And how, even though I'm femme, even though I'm queer, even though I'm pan, those parts aren't all of me. There's other parts of me. I'm Adrian, and what femme means to me, well, I mean, there are two aspects to it. For me, there's the performance aspect, which usually has to do with the portrayal of what your standard femininity is envisioned as but there's also the part that's a lot more internalized in just different things that I do that like make me feel more femme or things that I do that I acknowledge as being femme and just different, more so like behavioral things and feeling-based things, which I suppose behavioral would go into performance. So the performance aspect for me is very much wearing makeup and high heels and skirts and dresses and I actually only own two pairs of pants. <laughs> um, but the more like internalized behavioral part is just more so like when I can nurture something, like I have a garden in my room right now and just taking care of that is something that like makes me feel a lot more femme and more okay in my own skin. And just, I don't know, more so just different role-based things that I suppose have to do with, again, that like traditional notion of what we're taught femininity is, but it's less so just what's instilled upon us and more so me owning the parts of it that I do like and that I do enjoy and that are very much a part of me. I really rejected being femme, especially when I was younger, because I'm like, no, that's stereotypical and this is just something that's been pushed upon us. And then I'm like, oh wait, I actually really like makeup. It's this glorious form of art. Wow, I absolutely love this dress and this skirt. And for a long time, I wouldn't actually let myself wear those things so I'm like nope just being stereotypical and doing what I was taught I was supposed to and there was just a lot of resistance and like very slowly I started kind of easing into it more and doing more so things that I felt happy wearing as opposed to things that I thought that I shouldn't wear um and just really embracing what felt natural and what felt right. I identify as a dyke and as a femme woman. And it's interesting because like I'll go like to the dyke march and I'll get the, wow, you're so girly. Are you bi? Are you pan? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm a dyke. <laughs> I'm a girly dyke. Deal with it. For me, when somebody says they're queer and femme, if they say it, then that is law until they say otherwise. Like, it's not really my place to be like, hmm, you're wearing pants. You're not femme enough because that's nonsense. But it's for me all about like somebody's own identity and just having this mutual respect. And I'd really love to see more spaces that are opened up more to like 
femme queer individuals without the shame aspect that I've seen in the past. Like, I've gotten both from men and women the, you're so pretty, but you're a lesbian? And I'm like, that, no correlation whatsoever. So just kind of just accepting people for who they are would be really great. You can feel pretty isolated both within the straight community and the queer community because, um, you know, I think that there's this misunderstanding about femme queer women that femme is sort of buying into the uh, male gaze, the patriarchal um, expectations, uh, femme is weaker, you haven't overcome gender, and um, I think that that's wrong. I think that, um, you know, there are all types of women, there are all types of queer people, and just like I can respect being butch or more gender non-binary, um, you know, my femininity is just part of who I am. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think just like the word queer, it's gonna, just gonna depend on who you ask. Um, for me, I like the term of queer femme, um, queer and femme, but also queer femme, because I think it's a little, it's more of a modern interpretation. It's not an abbreviation for being a feminine lesbian. I think that anybody can be queer femme. I think that it's more of a mindset and a belief that there's all types of women, there's all types of queer people, and um, being femme is just as valid as anything else, and it's just as strong as any other way that a person um, chooses to express themselves. Um, I think that, yeah, queer femme is for anybody. It's not just for women or lesbian women. At, you know, hanging out with guys a lot is typically what I do. Um, <laughs> um, my femininity is usually the softer. I talk more, I'm able to express myself more. Um, I'm able to cry. Like, um, so just being able to have that balance despite what your exterior may look like, it's more of the self-expression. I express my fem by allowing myself to feel and showing the world with what I feel, whether it be via music, whether it's, um, it's all like expressing love, you know, and it's, it's not just so black and white. Um, clothing, um, I'm more, I would say, I don't wear the typical film clothing. I don't wear dresses. And from my underwear, you can see I wear boxer briefs, men, male boxer briefs. But um, the way I express myself and um, relate to others, I think that's what makes me film. <laughs> Being born a female, you're, you enter the world with so much liberation to do what you want, especially now, 2017. Um, we're able to wear pants. We are able to go to a men's section and no one really question what we do. So um, to be a female and still be considered feminine despite the clothing that I wear, it's pretty um, liberating for me.